In December 2007, Bangladesh was once again hit by a devastating cyclone, which caused havoc and loss of human lives. In Pushabunya, on the southern coast of Bengal, Saleha Begun still remembers the night the cyclone named Siddha struck her village. Bangladesh is one of the hardest hit countries in the world by climate change. With global warming, natural disasters will become even more frequent and severe. Millions of people are affected and need help. We need over the next five to five to seven years about ten billion dollars to be able to address our adaptation needs here in Bangladesh. Billions of dollars for climate change adaptation have been promised under the UN Climate Convention. To make best use of this money, the aid effectiveness principles of the Paris Declaration are also relevant. While developing countries criticize global funding for climate change for being fragmented and insufficient, the Paris principles are used when it comes to climate change funding at national level in Bangladesh. We have a, a climate change trust fund into which the government from budget allocates money. The, the government has so far allocated $200 million and we are using that. The other fund is climate change resilience fund into which uh, direct contributions from bilateral partners as well as multilateral agencies come. In the area of climate change, five development partners have decided to pool their grant resources in a mechanism that's managed by the government uh, rather than by us individually uh, with support from the World Bank to, to help Bangladesh implement its own strategy. I think if we hadn't got the Paris principles and ethos, we might be thinking of picking our own high-profile visible projects that would demonstrate that we were doing climate change in Bangladesh. While the Paris principles are being made use of in funding for climate change adaptation at the national level in Bangladesh, there is a strong feeling in Bangladesh and other developing countries that the Paris principles are not at all adhered to when it comes to the billions of dollars that the poor countries suffering from climate change have been promised under the UN Climate Convention. Now what is happening is uh, multi-donor systems like the Adaptation Fund and others are being created. Bilateral systems is being created and at the same time individual projects are being uh, discussed and negotiated. Atik Iraman has been following international climate change negotiations for years and blames the northern countries for looking at funding for climate change adaptation as traditional aid. Under the Climate Convention, they're obliged to give. From the southern perspective, or the developing country, it's like a compensation. From the northern perspective, it's helping the victims of climate impact. The multilateral funding the, under the UNFCC, there we find the commitments are either not made or when made, not kept. In spite of the Paris principle of mutual accountability, developing countries remain skeptical of pledges made for climate change funding. There have been in the past many, many, many commitments on the climate change in, from starting from 1992 in Rio and then many other meetings and so on, but um, commitments and, and then following, following through, there is a gap, big gap on this, has been in the past. More we delay, more will be the delay in the response, more harm to the communities and the ecosystem. In Poshabunya, the families who were hit by the cyclone Siddha are still trying to cope. <laughs> Bangladesh is 